Good morning. I'm Dr. Archana Sachdev, Principal Scientist at Indian Agricultural Research Institute, Delhi. I'm from the Division of Biochemistry. Today, I'm going to talk about the enzyme ionizable groups. And today's lecture will focus mainly on the understanding of what ionizable group in enzymes are. And we shall look at the various ionizable groups in the enzymes and understand the titration curves of some of the representative amino acids. This slide shows the concept map that will be followed in this lecture. We will first study what are the basic types of ionizable groups present in an enzyme. We will then study the titration curve of three specific amino acids in detail. These are the titration curves of glycine, which is a neutral amino acid, lysine, a basic amino acid, and glutamic acid, which is an acidic amino acid. Enzymes are protein molecules which contain a large number of acidic and basic groups. Depending on the type of amino acids present within the enzyme and their ionization with the pH of their environment, the charges on these groups vary. The overall charge on the enzyme along with its activity, stability and solubility is therefore affected. The functional groups in amino acids in the enzyme have the ability to readily ionize. Each amino acid has at least two acid-base groups, an amino group and a carboxyl group. Certain amino acids within the enzyme may also have ionizable side chains. At physiological pH, that is approximately 7.4, the amino group remains basic and protonated, while the COOH group is acidic and remains deprotonated. Amino acids can act both as acid or a base. That is, they can exist both in their cationic form as well as in their anionic form. Additionally, amino acids can also exist in a dipolar state which is known as a Zwitter ion form. In this dipolar state, amino group is protonated and carboxyl group is deprotonated. And these dipolar ions can act either as acid, which is a proton donor, or as a base, which is a proton acceptor. Such substances have a dual character and are called ampholytes. In the next few slides, we'll go through each of the ionizable groups and enzymes in more details. Having understood the existence of various forms of amino acids in solution, we now take a look at various ionizable groups which can be present in enzymes. These are as follows a terminal alpha amino group in which each peptide or protein which can accept a proton exists. A terminal alpha carboxy group in each peptide or protein which can donate a proton. Seven of the amino acids that is arginine, aspartic acid, cysteine, glutamic acid, histidine, lysine and tyrosine have ionizable side chains and these are able to donate or accept protons. The typical pKa value for the R group of these amino acids is given in table number 1. The predominant molecular species of amino acids present in an aqueous solution will depend on the pH of the solution. The Henderson-Hesselbach equation helps in the determination of the nature of molecular and ionic species that are present in the aqueous solutions at different pH values. Where pKa is the acidity of the specific conjugate acid. Now we'll go on to discuss the titration curves of some amino acids in the enzymes. And the titration curve for ionizable groups in three different types of amino acids will be discussed. These are amino acids with no ionizable side chain, that is glycine, amino acids with carboxylic side chain, that is glutamic acid, and amino acid with amine side chain, that is lysine. The amino acid glycine has no ionizable side groups. It has only two ionizable groups, a carboxyl group and an amino group. When titrated with a strong base, for example, NaOH, the titration curve so obtained is shown in figure two. The two steps are involved corresponding to the deprotonation of two groups with NaOH. These are explained in the next slide. 
At low pH, the amino acid is completely protonated and exists in its protonated form. As the titration continues, at first midpoint of pH 2.34, there is an equimolar concentration of the protonated and the deprotonated forms. The midpoint of any titration is the point of inflection where the pH is equal to pKa of the protonated group. For glycine, the first point of inflection occurs at pH equal to 2.34, so pKa at this point equals to 2.34. Thus, the carboxyl group of glycine has a pKa of 2.34. The second point of inflection is reached at pH 5.97. At this point, deprotonation of carboxyl group is completed and that of amino group has just started. At this pH, glycine is present as a dipolar ion. As the titration continues, deprotonation of amino group takes place. At midpoint, the pH equal to 9.6. The pKa for amino group is 9.6. Also at this point, there exists an equimolar concentration of proton donor and proton acceptor forms. As the titration proceeds further, around pH 12, the deprotonated form is found in abundance. Lysine is a basic amino acid with a third ionizable functional group, the R group. The titration curve of lysine is shown in figure 3. And as the concentration of hydroxide ion increases, the hydrogen ion concentration decreases. At the first pKa, the dissociation of alpha carboxyl takes place. At the second pKa, the dissociation of alpha amino occurs, while at the third pKa, the dissociation of the R group amino takes place. At each pKa, the solution resists the change in pH with the addition of more and more hydroxide. The pI occurs where lysine has no net charge. Thus, pI is equal to pK2 plus pK3 divided by 2. pI is thus reached at pH 9.75. Glutamic acid is an acidic amino acid with a third ionizable group, the R group. The titration curve of glutamic acid is shown in figure 4 above. At lower pH, that is less than 2, the glutamic acid carries an overall positive charge. As base is added, the group which has the lowest pKa is deprotonated. This therefore results in no net change on the glutamic acid. The isoelectric point is therefore obtained at pH equal to 2.2 plus 4.3 divided by 2, which is equal to 3.25. With further addition of base, the second acidic proton starts getting removed from the COH of the R group. This amino acid bears only a formal negative charge at the physiological pH of 7. To summarize the lecture, we can say that amino acids can act both as an acid or as a base. Additionally, amino acids can also exist in a dipolar state, which is known as a zwitter ion form. The functional groups of amino acids present in the enzyme have the ability to readily ionize. Also, amino acids have a terminal amino group and a carboxyl group, which are ionizable, and seven other amino acids, which have specific ionizable side chains, include arginine, aspartic acid, cysteine, glutamic acid, histidine, lysine, and tyrosine. The nature of molecular and ionic species present in the aqueous solution at different pH is determined by the henderson hasselbalch equation. The titration curve helps in the calculation of pKa values of ionizing groups, identification of regions of buffering for amino acid, and determination of electric charge of an amino acid. To conclude this lecture, we can say that we have discussed here the various ionizable groups of the enzymes. We have also seen that the charges on these groups vary depending on the type of amino acids present within the enzyme and their ionization with the environmental pH and how this influences the overall charge on the enzyme along with its activity, stability and solubility. Thank you.